All right, someone had to be at the bottom of this list, and that high honor obviously belongs to Falcon. It's not that his suit isn't useful. It totally is. It's just a little basic. All it does is give him giant wings. You're telling me that old man Captain America saw the former brainwashed, super soldier-esque assassin Bucky and then thought, nah, I'm going to give my shield to the guy who flies around and never has to pay for a plane ticket ever again. And I know it would look a little goofy, but who else wants to see Falcon in a more comic accurate suit. It's really important to me that Cap never finds out about this. The thing about Black Widow's suits throughout the MCU is that it's loaded with some amazing accessories. Besides being flexible and durable enough to usually survive some of Black Widow's crazy turn people into pretzels moves, it has gadgets like her electric batons as well as the Widow's Bite, bracelets that emit electric blasts. And if you don't think those are powerful, just remember that she used those electric blasts to slow down Black Panther, which takes serious skill. Though it's too bad her suit didn't come with an inflatable life jacket or a parachute, Maybe then her trip to Vormir wouldn't have ended so poorly. What happened to Doctor Strange's yellow gloves? Did he decide they weren't that stylish and only useful for washing dishes? Anyways, that's not what we're here to talk about. Doctor Strange has a really powerful suit, but that's really only because of one component, his cloak of levitation. That cape basically has a mind of its own and has helped Doctor Strange get out of a lot of tough binds in the past. But I'm pretty sure if you wash it with extra stiff laundry detergent, it will pretty much be useless. Alright, I know The Amazing Spider-Man 2 isn't anyone's favorite Spider-Man movie, but can we at least stop to appreciate how much fun Paul Giamatti was in the role of the Rhino? Sure, he was kind of shoved into the movie in a clear attempt to set him up for future films, which didn't work out super great for anyone, but that did lead us to a live-action version of Rhino in his high-tech suit. It was a little too large and incredibly bulky, but it did effectively pin down all the cops that were trying to stop it. I imagine future designs for this character in live action will be less massive, so let's all take a minute to appreciate this work of art. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy gave us a lot of awesome, colorful costumes throughout its run, and one of the most memorable has to be Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. That mask he wears has haunted many a person's nightmares, and his suit was a mixture of effective and just generally a little frightening, because at its core, this suit was just an advanced flight suit that allowed users to navigate on the nifty Goblin Glider. But Norman Osborn really made an effort after he went crazy to make something truly sinister. Like, he didn't have to be a Goblin, he could have easily just have been a man in an all-black flight suit. War Machine will never get enough credit because he's usually standing next to Iron Man, but his suit deserves to be recognized for its amazing firepower. It may not be the advanced nanotechnology that modern Iron Man suits are, but it still feels like a weapon of mass destruction. Packed to the brim with guns, explosives, and more guns, War Machine can wipe out huge hordes of enemies without breaking much of a sweat. Now the big question is this, with Iron Man gone, what's going to happen to the War Machine suit? Can Rhodey keep it main maintained and operating on his own? We'll have to see. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 stands as one of the best superhero sequels of all time, but one of the highlights is Doc Ock. And yes, I totally consider his extra appendages that are fused with his body as a suit. That's what they were designed for anyways. And although they don't offer his body much physical protection, there's still so much that they can do. They can climb, block bullets, have a mind of their own, and can handle a fusion reactor. Not many suits can do that. I'm only putting this suit so low on this list because it's impossible to remove. You try visiting your family for the holidays when you have giant metal tentacles. The Hulkbuster armor was designed by Tony and Bruce as a precaution in case Bruce ever lost control as the Hulk and needed to be stopped. We first got to see the suit of armor in action in Avengers Age of Ultron, where it displayed some impressive firepower. It was strong enough to go practically toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hulk, and was ready for any sort of replacement if Hulk damaged the suit. And when Hulk and Bruce were having relationship issues, Bruce used the Hulkbuster armor to great effect in Avengers Infinity War. It's a great suit that can turn anyone into a true force to be reckoned with. I'm combining Ant-Man and the Wasp's suits into one section because it's easier to talk about both of them at the same time. Both have incredible shrinking technology that could take out almost any hero or villain if used properly. And both suits have a few added perks. 
While Ant-Man's suit can allow him to grow into Giant Man when the situation calls for it, the Wasp's suit has wings that make her an agile warrior that zips through the air and is hard to stop. Put these two together and they're practically unstoppable. I'd like to see any hero go up against these two mini Avengers and see what happens. Alright, it's incredibly easy to insult any of the live-action Fantastic Four movies we've seen over the years. We've proven that making a good Fantastic Four movie is harder than wielding the Infinity Gauntlet at this point. But let's talk about the actual Fantastic Four suits. And the most impressive out of the four of them is Human Torch's suit. Although the design is relatively simple, it can still maintain its shape and form while Johnny burns at a smoking hot temperature. Most suits would dissolve or disintegrate if they were exposed to such heat but not the Human Torches suit. In the MCU, Peter Parker meeting Tony Stark was the best thing that could have happened to the webhead. Tony needed soldiers to fight in his civil war, so decided to recruit a 15-year-old boy to fly around the world and fight for him, which, sure, sounds bad when you say it out loud, but it did give Peter an amazing Spider-Man suit. And because this was designed by Tony Stark, it had some amazing features. Whereas other Spidey suits were pretty simple, this one was a high-tech piece of armor that came with a whole range of different gadgets and gizmos, like a whole bunch of web shooter modes, a kill mode, and other nifty life-saving features. If you don't mind having a gooey, sentient black sludge from outer space coat your body and tell you to kill everyone that makes you mad, then the Venom suit is actually quite extraordinary. Eddie Brock fused with the Venom suit and started a beautiful partnership and friendship we've never quite seen in a superhero movie before. The thing about the Venom suit is that it's a living, thinking, slightly irritable being. There's so much the suit can do too, veering dangerously close to Spider-Man's abilities without fully copying them. Thanks to the heart-shaped herb, the Black Panther possesses amazing strength, agility, and durability without any armor, so the suit itself is kind of an added benefit. And before Shuri came along, I wouldn't be surprised if the Black Panther suits weren't very advanced. But that's different now. The Black Panther suit is now one of the most powerful suits in the MCU. What started in Civil War as a normal vibranium suit soon upgraded into something incredible. In Black Panther, Shuri made some modifications so the Black Panther suits are held within special tribal necklaces. All the wearer has to do is think about it and the suit will appear around them. That's cool. Plus, the fact that the suit is a special type of vibranium weaved strands and still be as powerful is impressive. Although the Iron Spider suit was teased in Spider-Man Homecoming, it looked like we wouldn't see Peter actually suit up in that suit for a while. Thankfully, we didn't have to wait too long as Thanos' forces came knocking on Earth's door in Infinity War, forcing all the New York heroes to step up a bit. This resulted in Peter getting the Iron Spider suit. Sure, Tony gave Peter the Iron Spider suit as a way to save his life and keep him out of the battle, but that didn't work out that great as it only made Peter more determined to stay in the fight. This suit combines all the great things about an Iron Man and a Spider-Man suits, so what's not to like about it? Realistically, this whole list could have been filled with Iron Man suits, but I felt like that would be unfair to other entries here, so I decided to just pick one Iron Man suit to rule them all. And that's clearly his last one, the Mark 85. On one hand, it's truly amazing to see how much the Iron Man suits evolved over time. From the chunky and bulky Mark 1 to the practically magic Mark 85, it's a spectacular evolution. Tony's final suit was mainly nanotechnology that can form around his body and create just about anything he wanted. Did he want a giant rocket propulsor? Check. Special weapons and blasters? Check, check. And the suit was powerful enough to act as a stand-in Infinity Gauntlet when necessary. Enough said. This suit is the most powerful MCU suit ever.